Welcome back, bad movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where even if you're bad, you can still be better than someone else. I am Matt Presents, joined once again by my immaculate co-host. Hello, I am Mackle, more movie Mackle, or Mike, or Miguel, whatever you feel like. I feel like Tiffany. Tiffany. I'm gonna call you Tiffany for the rest of the episode. Uh, you're you're making me mad, Matt. <laughs> you're you're pissing uh, me off. So today it's the the clash of uh, comic strip animals who are quite large, uh, in different in ways. A, yes, in their live action movie debuts. We've got Garfield from 2004 and Marmaduke from 2010. Hell yeah. Uh, Michael, would you like to introduce Garfield? Yeah, but but, but before that, just really quickly, uh, I I know me and you have talked about it, but what's your familiar, like how familiar you're, fucking can't talk, how familiar are you with the uh, comics for both of these two? Because I knew what Garfield was, of course. Marmaduke, I knew who he was, but I literally never read one of his comics, which is literally just a panel. Um, a single panel, and then I read a bunch after watching the movie to see how accurate the movie was. Uh, to, put, uh, to make a long story short, Marmaduke doesn't talk, but he does in the movie. <laughs> yeah. That's odd. Um, I I have read a lot of Garfield. Um, I, I do think it's tad hit or miss. There's some really lame Garfield jokes, but there's some good ones, too. I've seen... Ep- Mar- oh, sorry, go ahead. Marmaduke, I just, like, I read it in the funny papers when I read the funny papers, but I never found it funny enough to, like, read on its own merits. All right, like, if it's right there in front of me, I'll take a look at it, but I'm, I'm not getting any, like, Marmaduke collections or anything. There was uh, one Marmaduke comic that made me laugh really hard when we were looking at those, the one where uh, he's going to get euthanized the next day. That was. I, I don't. I don't think that was an actual comic. I think. Article. I think that was the series finale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that makes sense. That makes sense. That's what the sequel would have focused on. Um, if it got made. No, I really like the. I really liked some of the old Garfield cartoons when I was a kid. I wasn't. I I, I liked to get fuzzy. I thought that was a funny morning Sunday morning or just morning comic in general. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, uh as far as like the funny pages go, I'm a I'm a big big fan of Calvin and Hobbes and The Far Side, but they're both though those were both out of print before I ever started reading the funny pages. So, I only know them through like collections that have been put out since. I know um, Calvin and Hobbes pretty well, I am obviously aware of the characters, but I actually don't know if I've ever read their comics before. Maybe when I was a kid, I have a very vague memory of it. But uh, I, I would highly, highly recommend Calvin and Hobbes. Did they ever like, have like still. a TV show or movie? No, because Calvin and Hobbes creator Bill Watterson is notoriously reclusive and doesn't want any merchandise based on the comic. I would say that is um, a good thing. So we we might get they might Stephen Hillenberg him after he dies. He's getting up in years, but Oh yeah. We're not get we're not getting a Calvin and Hobbes movie or TV show as long as he's still alive. Gotcha. Well, I can introduce Garfield now. Garfield the movie came out in 2004. It was directed by Peter Hewitt. Is that how you say his last name? Sure. Um, it was produced by John Davis. It does have a sequel that I enjoyed as a kid. Um, I did never liked the first one. Even as a kid, I thought the first one was really boring. And this rewatch uh, did nothing for that. Those thought, those feelings. Uh, I don't think it's the worst thing ever made. I've seen worse live action cartoon character movies. Like I couldn't even fucking get through Woody the Woodpecker. I tried. It's fucking horrible. Uh, I would say this is better than that. But uh. You know, Bill Murray as Garfield was a good cast and choice, and he fits yeah. the character, and I think the character's written properly, too. Uh, I was never that, like, like as I said before, I was never that, like, amazed by the Garfield comic strip. But there, there were, like, it had, like, like I said, some of the cartoons had their moments. I did read the whole Nine Lives thing with the really dark comics included in it, and then I watched the movie. 
<clears throat> I enjoyed that stuff. Yeah, I just... Because this movie is about... John gets a new dog, Odie. And uh, he's good at dancing? <laughs> so he kind of just seems like he's up on his hind legs, like, jumping around. It, it doesn't seem that impressive to me. I've seen dogs do that before. But Matt, there's uh, all of the dances in the Garfield comic strip. That's what Odie's famous for. He's not famous for anything else. Uh, so this, there, there's a guy who sells cat food, but he hates cats and is allergic to them. So he wants to find a dog to replace them so he can sell dog food from now on. So he steals Odie. And Garfield has to rescue Odie. And I guess I didn't give a plot synopsis. I failed to introduce the movie properly. <laughs> I mean, it's such a nothing plot that it's like, yeah, that's, who cares? Um, cause I, I have not watched tale of two kitties since I was young, probably since it came out on DVD, but just like, looking at the plot, that makes more sense to me. This, like, Prince and the Pauper story, because it gives Garfield a chance to, you know, really indulge his, you know, gluttony and sleeping all the time. Like, he, he can just eat and sleep all day because he's a prince now. But then, you know, it has the heartfelt ending where he's like, I have to get back to John because I love John. Um... That just makes more sense to me. If you're gonna write a Garfield movie, that sounds like the plot you should give a Garfield movie. This fucking, I have to rescue Odie. What the fuck? That's not Garfield. Garfield wouldn't do that. Yeah, Gar Garfield has, like, I guess, some rare moments of care for Odie, but this movie, if that's what they're trying to establish. They have one scene of the two dancing together that goes on for a minute. And then when Garfield is caught dancing with Odie by the other cats, he immediately pushes him away. That is the chemistry they build over the movie. That is the one scene that they are getting along. And from that Garfield just loves Odie by the end of it. Uh, it does. Yeah. It doesn't work. There's a scene where like Garfield gets kicked out of the house and Odie comes out to like, you know, gets, makes it so he can get back inside the house. And then Garfield like runs in and locks the door on him. So yeah, it's just not, I understand that that's how these kind of movies go, but I've seen movies where it's like, oh, the two, a ton of them, especially in kids movie where the two characters, oh, they're not getting along. They don't like each other. But by the end, they grow a strong bond. This movie just kind of skips to they grow a strong bond without anything <laughs> actually leading up to it. Yeah. Garfield just cares about Odie because he's afraid that he's dead. Um, yeah. And he's, he's like afraid he's going to get in trouble with John. Yeah. <laughs> if John finds out. Quite the the cast there. I mean, we we talk about Bill Murray. Yeah, really good choice for Garfield, of course. The one good choice in this movie. Yes, some um, just some of like the fucking choices for cats didn't make sense. Arlene is supposed to be oh like God, a pink yeah. cat, right? Yeah, Ar Arlene is like this pink cat, and I mean, I guess it doesn't really make sense. Like, she's just supposed to be a generic girl cat because yeah. she's pink and she's got big lips. So, you know, she's the girl. I guess they can't put a pink cat into this movie. And if you're going to have a female cat, you might as well name it the same name as the female cat from the comic. But she looked like Norman. Norm What's that cat's name again? Normal. Normal. Jesus. Uh, she looks like Normal because she's a great cat. That should have been Normal and the other cat should have been Arlene. <laughs> Yeah, because Normal does not look like Normal. Yeah. It's so weird that they they animated Garfield. They made Garfield look like Garfield. But then they're like, nah, fuck you. Every other character is just like generic animal. Yeah. Okay? It's not cartoon animals. Garfield is the only cartoon animal. Yeah. It's a kind of a... It's kind of a double-edged sword because if you make him look like a normal cat, then it doesn't look like Garfield. But if you make him like a CG model based off the cartoon character, it, it does not, it doesn't look good. It looks really uncanny. You're not supposed to, I, like some people get away with it. Like Sonic, it, originally they didn't get away with it, but then they redesigned him and made him a lot more cartoonish. I know a lot of people don't like the new Space Jam, but admittedly, uh, like aside from some of the textures being weird, it's 
like it it does look like like three D versions of the characters. They're still very cartoonish. They look yeah. fine for the most part. I'd say like Bugs and Porky look a little weird. I don't know. The textures are just off. But like you you get what I'm saying though. It it wor- yeah. it works better. I don't. Th- I I think Garfield worked okay. It's a little off. It's a little off putting, but. I don't think it's the worst. It's not as Uh, bad as the first take on Sonic. It's just, it's inconsistent, right? Like, all of the other animals should also look kind of cartoony. He also does not blend well with the live-action footage. Yeah. The the light doesn't hit him quite right. Yeah, I would would agree. It just, it did not look right. There's, There's scenes where he's just, like, walking on a... I remember there's just like a scene where he's walking on the driveway and it just, yeah, it looks really weird. It, 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 he doesn't, oh, he man. doesn't look like he's there um, at all. There's a scene where he's, he's like holding on to the bottom of John's truck. Yeah. And like, as, as the truck like turns, Garfield is like moving in a way like he wouldn't be in real life. Yeah. Like he slides up further onto the truck. There, I'll give them one thing. I, yeah, no, I remember you pointing that out too. The one thing I could give it is that, like, and this is like not giving it too much credit. This is just saying they did do the bare minimum in some scenes. Like, there's a scene where he's sitting on the couch and dancing around, and you do see like the couch indent with every single step. It so in that, that those scenes, I feel like he almost blends in a little better. Plus, it's like indoor yeah. light, and so you can like have more control over what that's going to look like. Yeah. With a, with a CG character. But yeah, I, I would say like that, they at the very least did the bare minimum. I swear that Woody the Woodpecker movie that came out so many years after, he's just flying around the sky. So it's supposed so that should make it really easy to make him blend into the screen. He doesn't have to actually interact with anything in the scene. He can fly around and avoid it. Uh, but no, he, it looks worse. <laughs> it actually looks worse. Yeah. <clears throat> We could definitely find something to pair that up with. Yeah, just not our cartoon, For really. For sure. Yeah. Um, so, apart from Bill Murray, we got yeah. uh, Brecklin Meyer as John and Jennifer Love Hewitt as Liz, which neither of those really work. Um, nope. Not, and, not and at I all. Think I think Brecklin Meyer and Jennifer Love Hewitt do decent enough jobs, but they're they're not John and Liz. It's the, the part of the problem is the writing, right? They have yeah. not been written as John and Liz, so so John they're getting close. John they're getting somewhat close because I I think like personality wise he does kind of have like he is a kind natured character like that they just need to add a little bit more goofiness to the character and a little bit more misfortunes of the character to make him more yeah. like john um whereas uh liz yeah it's not even close uh and i don't necessarily blame that on jennifer love hewitt because it's wait peter hewitt and Jen- are those two married uh, are they related <laughs> hmm hmm I'm looking this up. I'm looking this shit up. It might be her brother or something, or maybe they're, it's just coincidence. I think it's just coincidence. Because you, you and I were talking about who would be better as, like, all these characters. Um, and and we, we got some really solid modern casting. I agree. Um, it's, uh, it, it's funny because at the same time, we were thinking Aubrey Plaza as Liz. Uh, Aubrey Plaza as Liz. That's perfect casting. That and, would be and ideal. Michael Sarah as John. Yeah, but we both said Aubrey Plaza at the same time. Michael Sarah would also fit, and it's kind of funny because the two were both in Scott Pilgrim together already. So you could make that work. They yeah. they've they've had experience working together. But uh, yeah, I, I, Aubrey Plaza is perfect. Um, because Liz is a very cynical character, from what I understand of the comic book. She's like. Yeah, she she's got a good heart. She, her and John care for one another, I guess. But but you know she's very yeah, she's very she's negative. real sarcastic. She's not <laughs> she's not Jennifer Love Hewitt. Like oh John, don't you know I had a crush on you in high school? Like no, you fucking didn't. 
Okay, no one had a crush on John in high school in the comics. In, in the comic, she is almost kind of used as a way to cause John misfortune, where he normally screws the date up, or she's unimpressed by him in some way. Uh, where in the movie, she's like used as a positive thing for John's character. Yeah. Um, we did talk about who we might cast in 2004. Because, um, yeah, said, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked if you casted those two at that time. They would have been too young. Yeah, they'd have been too young. I, uh, um, shoot, uh, Janine Garofalo. Janine Garofalo as Liz, I think, is very choice casting. Um, we kind of noodled around on John. We, we didn't come up with anything good. Well, you said Ben Stiller, uh, which wasn't... I s- Ben Stiller, I think, could do it. I think, I think he, he could. could. I think he would be a better choice than Brecklin Meyer, at the very least. Yeah, I don't. I, when I look at his face, I don't quite get John out of that. He doesn't look like John to me, but I do think personality-wise, he could sell it better. Yeah, yeah, he he could sell John, right? He's he's not a perfect John, like Michael Sarah, perfect John. Even the hair, up to the like, up to the style choice, like fashion choice. And hair, he is John. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Ben Stiller, mm, he could pull it off. It'd be, I feel like it'd be really good for him, too, because he's like, oh, he used to play all these like really awkward characters in movies, and now he's gotten older. And a lot of like people who make movies, they want to like make the awkward person, the like, awkward character, a younger person, like some kid who is in high school or college. But now he's older, so John is a perfect awkward character to give him. Uh, there's also Stephen. Tobolowski as Happy Chapman, the villain of the movie. He he is in Spaceballs and Adaptation, so he is in my two favorite movies. So who is he in? Sad to see him. Who is he in Adaptation uh, again? In Adaptation, let me look. Marmaduke has an adaptation actress in it too. Yeah, Ju- Judy Greer. Yeah. In Marmaduke. So two adaptation actors today. Two actors from my favorite movies. Yes. This week. In in Spaceballs, he is the captain of the guard. He's the one who says, Oh, you idiots, these are their stunt doubles. That's him. Uh-huh. Uh oh, he's like a park ranger in adaptation. It seems like a yeah, Ranger Steve ne- Neely. You know what's funny? It seems like a smaller role, but you know, it's funny. Um, in a way, adaptation and Spaceballs are both movies that are about breaking down movies in their own way, in their own light. True. Yeah. This is also this is also <laughs> not his first outing with Bill Murray. He plays Ned Needlemeyer in Groundhog Day. So. Oh, that's like the other employee employee, right? There's like him, the one girl, and. That, or is that... Wait, no. no, that's not him. That's someone else. No, Ned Needlemeyer is the one who sees him every morning. And he's like, yeah. Ned Needlemeyer from high school! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ned the head! <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen uh, Groundhog Day, but it's a great movie. Um, Might be my favorite Bill Murray movie. Might be my favorite Bill Murray movie. No, nah, mine's Garfield. <laughs> uh, okay, so real talk. The first hour, not even the first hour, honestly. The first half of this movie, I was fine with. Um, it wasn't, you know, not good, but I mean, it was just like, okay, it's just Garfield and Odie fucking around. That's basically what you might want out of a Garfield movie. Um, I, I, I don't mind movies like this keeping the plot simple. I honestly prefer it. But no, they do the third act, and the third act is almost half of the movie where it's just them like, oh, he gets kid, Odie gets kidnapped, and it's by the dog food commercial guy because he thinks that this dog is going to make him famous forever and not like 15 minutes of fame, even though there's already... Plenty of videos that exist of dogs doing that at this point. Um, <laughs> but this is going to fucking make him big. And it's the fame is never going to die down. This is totally worth doing. Um, it's not like the dog is going to be on TV and John can say, hey, that's my dog. He kidnapped him. Here's the papers to prove it's my dog. Here's the uh, here's the event that we both went to. Um, and I, I just hate the whole second half of this movie so much. It's everything that you've seen somewhere else before. It's so boring. I wasn't even bored by the yeah. first half of it. It's not, again, it's not good, but it's just, yeah, you're just watching, okay, this is the live action version of these characters. Fine. If, if you really like Garfield, at least they got one of the characters right. And it's, 
it's fine. But man, I got so fucking bored. <laughs> I got so fucking bored by the second half of this movie. Yeah. Chase um, scenes. I, I mean, you and I started like predicting what was about to happen. Yeah. With like supreme clarity. Because I, I remember uh, Garfield sees Odie on TV and he's trying to get John to come over to the TV and you're like, it's going to be a food commercial. Yeah. And it was. It cut right to a Wendy's commercial <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, that was spot on. Yeah. Because he, cause he's like saying, no, uh, John, get over here, get over here. It's so important. It's so important. And then, yeah, Garfield's fat. So the joke is, oh, he's like, oh, thinking about food again, Garfield. It's just, it's tiring. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of, of course, there's the, the, oh, it's it's too far, it's too long a walk, I can't go on. And it's like, I, I didn't even have to say it, I did. But it's yeah. like, we all know where this joke is going. Yeah, he is. We all know where this joke is going. He's not out of the driveway yet. Uh, uh, oh, oh, there's still movies that do that fucking joke. <laughs> That's not, that is not uh, dead yet. And I mean, I, I honest to God, I bet the first time they did it, it was hilarious. I probably laughed at that joke the first time I saw it as a kid. That's a good way to subvert expectations one time and then never again. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and then they put a shock collar on Odie. Yeah, you I'm got like, that. <laughs> into the, by the end of the movie, they're going to put the shock collar on the villain and shock him. And that. And you know what? They did. And then I threw in one note, too, saying that he, they will also make him do a flip, and they did. <laughs> um, Mar Marmaduke does the whole predictable ending thing, too, but to give it credit for something. So, like, my biggest problem with endings like this is I don't like it when a movie does something where you now know what the rest of the movie is before you get there. If it's just Garfield yeah. and Odie fucking around the house, you don't really know where that's going to go. They could find, like, that's like the point in the movie where there's still hope for it, you know? Then once the Odie gets kidnapped, it's like, okay, I know, I know everything that's going to happen. There's no reason for me to keep watching this. I'm not, la if, 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 there are movies that have really predictable story, like, really predictable ways the stories are going to go. But if it's making you laugh or you at, at least find the characters charming, that's something. But without that, it's just, it's over. Yeah. It's over. It's fucking over. I'll give Marmaduke credit. It, it it was going in that direction, and then it did throw one thing in that neither me or you expected. <laughs> uh, yeah. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Yes. Um, Garfield. Shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, do you think this movie would work if it was just kind of Garfield and Odie fucking around the house the whole movie? Like, yeah. like, no plot at all. It's just kind of Garfield and Odie getting up to shenanigans. Sort of an episodic thing. Yeah. You know, I think they could have done... Um, I mean, and, you know, another thing you could do is just have Odie as a character from the beginning. There's, like, movies... I think there's, like, a special where they just go to the... John goes to his family, like, family's house for Thanksgiving, and there's enough characters there to where shenanigans ensue, I think. I mean, or it's Christmas, maybe. I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time. Yeah, Christmas. Um, but yeah, you could just do something like that if you wanted. Um, but, um, but like simplicity for like simplicity's sake, you don't need a grand story for Garfield. Um, no. but also I feel like, yeah, they could have just had Garfield and Odie fuck around the house. It would have been more ideal if they made Odie an idiot like he is in the comics. Yeah. That's the weird thing is like, cause cats and dogs can talk to each other in this universe. And that's also true in the Garfield comic, but it, the, the implication in the comic is, Odie is so stupid, he can't talk to the other animals. Yeah. But in this movie, it's like, uh, Odie seems pretty competent. He... Yeah. He, he's not an idiot, he just... Yeah. I don't know, he annoys Garfield. Maybe they... A, do you think there's a chance that maybe they were looking into, like, trying to do a 3D model for Odie? And that, I feel like that design would be much worse in live action if they tried to, like, model it with Odie's design because of how, like, long his neck is. I think that would be really uncanny. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Maybe they just should have done an animated movie. You know, why bring, why make Garfield live action at all? You could he already works in 2D. You can say that about almost any one of these movies. I'm trying to think of one that works well, where it's like cartoon character and like three in like live action. I'm sure there, I could think of at least one, but even like fucking Space Jam, they like the first one, they keep it like 2D animated, which was a good call. I wish more movies would do that. It doesn't have that happen that often anymore. Um, it, it, that would be a good way to stand out against your competition too, honestly. 
um, because not a lot of movies are doing that. Uh, there's a really fucking good video that Hot Diggity Demon made about the uh, Sonic movie where they said he said he should have done that, like not only because it would have blended in a lot nicer, it would have like looked more like the character, but also it's a movie based off a 90s character. And that's like the 90s or late 80s is when like shit like Roger Rabbit and Space Jam was coming out. It could like reflect that time period a bit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think it'd be interesting if they had like two D Garfield and Odie running around in a live action space. Yeah, I'd be completely down with that. There is one, one, one thing I'd say. Like, you, yeah, I, but going back to what you were saying before, I do think you could just have a movie with the two of them fucking around in the house, and then you could like have them have scenes where they're having like ups and downs. Like, there's a scene where Garfield maybe likes Odie for a second, but then there's a scene where Odie does something to annoy him again, and you know, so on and so forth, and they just have all these different scenes. Um, and then you could have, like, if you wanted to throw in a climax, just have them get abducted by, like, like, a, by some, have them, like, escape the house and then they get hit by, like, uh, they get taken to the pound or something. And if you got a funny enough carrot, yeah. like, cut the dog food commercial villain and come up with a different villain. Fucking throw Tim Curry in or someone like that. Someone who's just really yeah. good at improvising and doing something funny on the spot. Have him be the dog catcher. And, yeah, just focus the last 20 minutes on that. They have to escape, uh, Garfield helps Odie get out too, showing that they have a little bit of a bond and end it. And maybe he like gets out without Odie and then he's like, oh no, I gotta go back. Yeah. You can even, but, I mean, that's, that's an obvious direction to go, but I still think it'd be a more interesting movie than this. It, yeah. Especially if you just didn't put a lot of time into it, give it like 10 to 20 minutes. Don't give it like this movie had like almost 40 minutes of this shit. It got old so fast. It just drags on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know what I'm saying. Like, I know what me and you are talking about. It's nothing groundbreaking. We're not, like, pitching a wonderful movie here, but it's just, yeah, no. if you're going to do a Garfield it's, movie. Yeah, like, like, just something silly that, like, kids will enjoy. Yeah. That's the thing. Do you think kids would enjoy this movie? I didn't as a kid. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I, I feel like if you liked Garfield as a kid, you would be bothered by how little this has to do with Garfield. And if you didn't like Garfield, there's nothing that funny in the movie. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think I was eight when this came out, so I think that's an okay, I think that's like the proper demographic for this movie. Like yeah, I, that sounds about right. And like I said, I liked the second one. I did. I, I and I, I that could have just been me being a kid with like shitty tastes, but I did enjoy it. This even like even as a kid, this one was really boring to me. The um, I'm trying to think if there's a single part I laughed at in it. Maybe when the guy said, "I hate lasagna," just because oh, that's how you know he's a villain. <laughs> that's how it's not. It's not even a sincere laugh though. I'm I'm still laughing at it. <laughs> Not with it. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm laughing because of how, like, ludicrously over the top it is. Yeah. Um, I guess that's all I have to say about it. I'd give it, like, a 2 out of 10. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's not, there's not a lot going for it. Anything else you have to say about it? Uh, there's one thing I think we should mention. Oh, um, yes. There's quite a bit of product placement in this. A lot of... Petco and dog food, although not as blatant as Marmaduke. Marmaduke has some really blatant Petco. Like, like Petco is a plot point in Marmaduke. Yes. But there's there's a lot of Petco branding on this. And that all makes sense, like, right? Like, stuff for pets. That makes sense for a Garfield movie. But then they have some other really blatant product placement, like the Wendy's commercial we mentioned. And among them... There is a case of Pepsi Blue. Yes. Which is a product that was released in the early 2000s. I think it was discontinued the same year this movie came out. Yeah. But once you know, Pepsi brought it back this year. It brought it back like a month I... ago. Me and Matt like paused to say, what the hell is Pepsi Blue? Uh, yeah. And then we looked it up and it was like, oh, it got discontinued. And then it was like, oh, it came back a month ago. Yeah, it, it just came back. So I have with me a bottle of Pepsi Blue that we're gonna I uh, react to live. I mine's lamer. I went to Target. They didn't have it. They were out of it. So they had Pepsi Mango, which is also kind of weird. So I just grabbed that. So irrelevant, but I figured I should grab something. <laughs> uh, 
Pepsi that was discontinued in 2004. Let's give it a try. <laughs> the mango one tastes pretty good. It's not like... Hmm. It's not bad. I, I You could mix something with that easily, too, if you wanted to make yourself like an alcoholic beverage and you're cool with mixing soda. I should note, the liquid is like completely blue um, and it's blueberry flavored. It says berry flavored. But I have to assume it's blueberry, right? Yeah, I mean, Pepsi Blue, blueberry, why not? It kind of tastes like five gum. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I poured... Like, th- like, there's one flavor of five gum that tastes just like this. I poured some of mine into a glass just to see if it has a color. It looks like slightly lighter colored than regular Pepsi, the mango one. But yeah. it's But it's still, like, brown. I don't know. If you're going to bring back discontinued Pepsi, I want more Pepsi Crystal. Crystal Pepsi. You, All right. you like Pepsi or Coca-Cola guy? Or uh, or they're not different enough for you actually to care? I I don't really care. I drink a lot of Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper's what I drink the most of. Yeah. I've always but. been fine with a Pepsi. I've always been fine with a Coca-Cola. I, I, do no- I do notice the difference, but I don't think it's like significant enough to where... I'm displeased. I think I I like Pepsi better, but I don't really drink much of either, so... Yeah. I don't drink much of either, either. But, uh... But yeah, just given my thoughts on that debate. Next episode, Pepsi Man versus... What does Coca-Cola have? (laughs) Uh... uh, I'd like to buy the world a Coke. Yeah, we're gonna compare that commercial, and we're just gonna review commercials. (laughs) I mean, if we did video games, we could do, like, Pepsi Man versus uh, the 7-Up Dot game. Yeah. But that's not this show. This show's about movies. Yeah. I I also... That's too much, like... It's easy to sit down and watch a movie. That's, like, adding too much. Pepsi Man's apparently hard. Pepsi Man's apparently a hard game. Thus concludes the Pepsi Blue review portion of our Garfield versus Marmaduke discussion. Yes. Uh, moving on, let's talk about the 2010 film Marmaduke. Yes, you uh, introduced starring, this one. Starring Owen Wilson as Marmaduke. Uh, Marmaduke is a very large dog. He's a Great Dane with, like, what else did they say? It's He's a Great Dane, but he's got something else in him that's also really big. I, like Mastiff, maybe. I don't remember. Um. Uh, so he's a he's a big dog, and his family lives out in Kansas, and uh, his owner is like an advertising executive, because of course he's a fucking advertising executive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they they move out to California for this big. Uh, he he gets this big job with this like organic dog food company, uh, run by William H Macy. Um, definitely got to talk about him. And it's, as our friend Mitzi so succinctly put it, (laughs) it's a a high school movie, but with dogs. (laughs) Yeah. It's just, it's a teen drama with dogs. Legitimately, when we watched this, I'm not convinced they made this out of, like, anyone made this out of the thought process of, like, oh, it's Marmaduke, he's gonna sell tickets. I think they wanted to make a dog movie, and they're like, do we own anything with a dog in it? They saw Marmaduke, and they're like, yeah, let's do that, because nothing is right. Marmaduke doesn't talk in the comic, he talks in the movie, and the only other character I could kind of get any type of, like, understanding of when looking at the comics was Phil, and Phil is much angrier in the comics than this yeah, movie's like film. A, an old curmud- or curmudgeon old man in the comics. Uh, directed by Tom Day. Has not done much besides this. He did Shanghai Noon with uh, Owen Wilson and Jackie Chan. But that's really the only notable thing he's done besides this. Basically, Marmaduke shows up in California and the, he, he wants to get in with the popular dogs... But he's in with, like, the outcast dogs, so then there's, like, this whole, he, he, like, stages a fight with this cat, and then he wins a surf competition, and so he's the cool dude, but then they find out the cat thing was fake, 
and they stop being his friend. It's really lame, yeah. but like, <laughs> I mean, it's it's something else. Truth be I, told, I did laugh a decent bit more at this one. And most of the time, it's like Garfield. I wasn't laughing with it. I was laughing at it. But I think there was a joke or two that genuinely made me laugh in this. And some of it just came from um, just a William. How do you say his last name? Is it Macy? William H. Macy? Yeah, William H. Macy. Yeah, he, he's just a he's just a good actor. And yeah, he had this energy to him in this yeah, movie where he, it was actually kind of funny. He Listen. This is by no means his best performance. No. But he he gives the best performance of the movie. Yeah. But also, like, Bosco kind of had a silly voice. Like, it's how seriously the actor's taken Bosco, like, the villain dog, was funny. The Chupadagra oh, uh, voiced by Ke- Sam Elliott made me laugh. Yeah, Sam Elliott has a, a brief appearance. Kiefer Sutherland is the, the big bully dog. He's, he's the popular dog that Marmaduke wants to challenge. Um, what a, like, weirdly star-studded cast. It's like, how did you get all <laughs> these celebrities to show, I mean, I guess, I guess it is just, like, their voices, so yeah. it was probably cheaper to just be like, here, voice this dog, but, uh, Emma Stone as yeah. the, the leader of the outcast dogs, George Lopez as the cat who lives with Marmaduke. Which probably, um, like, George Lopez, I don't know if he's that popular today, but in 2004 he was probably still, like... probably this was 2010. Oh, 20 fucking, yeah, that's right, Garfield was 20, 2004. 2010, uh, I don't know, Lopez Tonight, I think, was a thing during that time. Yeah. Um, Christopher Mintz Plass, um, as, as one of the outcast dogs. Also Steve Coogan, both of them were outcast dogs. Yep. This, this is hilarious to me. Uh, the... There's this Lassie-looking dog, Border Collie? Lassie's a Border Collie, right? I th- yeah, I think so. Uh, and she's, like, the, the girl Marmaduke wants to get with the whole movie. And she is voiced by goddamn Fergie. Wait a second, the, the, the Border Collie looks... Piece. The Border Collie looks more like uh, the dog that Emma Stone is. What type of dog was Lassie? Keep going. Fucking Fergie... Voices <laughs> the love interest dog, and it's it's really funny because I clearly know more about celebrities than Michael does, and Michael's looking at the cast and he's like, S- "Someone called Fergie, no <laughs> last name," and I'm like, "Hold on, Michael, are you telling me Fergie, the musician, member of the Black Eyed Peas, is in the fucking Marmaduke movie?" <laughs> I, I'm wrong, by the way. It's a uh, rough collie breed, so that is you were right. Uh, is rough collie different from border collie? I think so. Sure, why not? I have no idea. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I got fixated uh, on it for some reason. Uh, the the Wayans brothers are Kiefer Sutherland's like backup gang. Uh, Damon Wayans and Marlon Wayans. Uh, and then, of course, you've got Judy Greer yes. as the owner's wife and and William H. Macy. N- those are the two biggest actors who actually appear on screen. Yeah. Everyone else is just a voice. But it's still like, how did you get this many voices? And some of them, it's like, why? Why did you get Fergie to be the fucking love interest? <laughs> although, uh. although... This was a prediction I made well in advance, and I fucking nailed it. I'm like, okay, he's gonna go after Fergie Dog the whole movie, but then he's gonna realize that the one he actually wants is uh, Emma Stone Dog. Yeah. You did predict it before it became, like, it was pretty easy to predict to begin with, but you did predict it before, like, the scene where it was just, yeah, they just basically told you that's what they're doing. Because she starts, he starts asking, like, questions about girls and she's answering for him like yeah that's like so obvious at that point but you did get it before that yeah there's there's a point at which it becomes really obvious and i got it before that but it is still a pretty common trope of yeah. these types of movies of <laughs> of teen dramas 
which this is not. This is supposed to be a Marmaduke movie. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the weird thing, right? Cuz a Garfield movie almost makes sense on like robot studio producer level. It's like Garfield is popular character, therefore make Garfield movie. I don't think Marmaduke is popular enough to warrant a movie. Yeah. I don't think so either. I have never met anyone who's talked about Marmaduke up until uh, you brought it up for this podcast. You're the first person who's mentioned Marmaduke. Aside from that, it's been I, I was aware of his existence because of the newspaper. Like something that really highlights my point here. I got both of these DVDs from my local library. When I went to search for Garfield, I went, okay, Garfield, filter by DVD, and it's got, you know, Garfield and Friends and the Garfield show and a couple of the TV specials before I get to the Bill Murray movie. I went, Marmaduke, filter by DVD, it was this movie and nothing else. <laughs> so, like, Garfield, there is a precedent for films about, for, for content about... Marmaduke, it's like, was anyone asking for this? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I think it's that... I think they wanted to make a dog movie and put in a recognizable character on it. Not a very recognizable character, but just something might have been better than making an original character. Yeah. Maybe they I could... Suppose that. Maybe they could sell a few extra tickets if they put Marmaduke on it instead of some random dog they made up. Yeah. Owen Wilson's the worst actor in this movie, by the way, is Marmaduke. Yeah, probably. I, I, it was not a good performance. The, some of the dog... Like I said, Sam Elliott doing the Chupa Dog, or that scene is taken so seriously that I actually enjoyed it. I was, again, laughing at it, but but that's not a bad... <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you could do that any better with what's being written there. Yeah. Owen Wilson is such an odd actor because... Usually, I don't think he's very good, but every now and then, someone will write something that it's like, yes, that's what Owen Wilson should be doing. Usually, it's Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson knows how to write for Owen Wilson. He's great okay. in Bottle Rocket. No one else does. No one else knows how to write for Owen Wilson. <laughs> and then you have the Marmaduke and Garfield crossover in uh, Life Aquatic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're both in that. Yeah, they're what like father know? and son, yeah. <laughs> Garfield is Marmaduke's father. Yes. <laughs> Garfield Just... did some questionable things. <laughs> Fan edit of that movie where it replaces Bill Murray and Owen Wilson with Garfield and Marmaduke. <laughs> <laughs> you just, like, put PNGs over them every time they move. <laughs> um... So I we should talk about the ending since we set it up. Yeah, because it was the one thing about this movie that caught us off guard. Because up to that point, we're like, okay, yeah. The, I mean, I wasn't predicting that Marmaduke was gonna be like a teen drama, but with dogs. But once it was established that that's what this movie was, it's like, okay, I know where this is going. But then the ending happens, and uh. Uh, an earthquake hits, and Marmaduke's love interest, the Emma Stone dog, not the Fergie dog, falls into a hole, and Marmaduke jumps in after her, and then his owner has to go rescue him, because he's too big to lift up out of the pipelines. Yep. And it's, it's like this weirdly intense scene that just sort of... I, it, caught, it caught us off guard. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's so funny, too, because I was saying, like, because we, we, we talked a lot while watching these two. But, like, during uh, that one part, I, 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 like, had to stop talking when, when that happened. I was like, yeah. So I was, like, saying, like, so I think Gar I was basically saying out loud, I think Garfield was a little worse about the whole third act predictableness. But I said, but this movie's absolutely been just as bad in that regards. And before I finished that sentence, she fell underground. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, right as I was saying it, that happened. Um, and yeah, that, I mean, that's, that points for that. Not, not a lot, but that's, that. <laughs> it's something. It is, it is something. They, it was, you know, it was a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I think it adds to the challenge a little bit too. I mean, it's not done well, but that's, yeah, you have to animate the ground breaking apart and you have to now do this 
scene in the sewers. It's you could have just had them find the dogs and end the movie. Yeah. It's putting um, a little bit more effort in. I do think this movie tried harder than Garfield, honestly. Um I it's probably. not it's just like it's not well made either, and I do believe it's half assed. But I mean, they, there's like scenes where it's like there's a set that was built. There's this junkyard scene. It's not an amazing set, but Garfield has a house, a street, a train station, a vet, a park. It's like all so bland. And in this one, they actually did add like there's like a little bit of personality to that junkyard they made. Yeah, and I mean they show off a lot of like California. They've got that advantage. Um, how do you feel about the integration of, of, like, Marmaduke versus Garfield? Because Marmaduke is, like, a real dog whose, like, mouth they have CG'd. I actually think Marmaduke looks more uncanny than Garfield because he's so, cl- he's, like, close to a normal dog, but there's just something off, slightly off because of it. Garfield looks cartoonish enough to where, I still think he looks uncanny in that movie, but it it feels more consistent, ironically enough, where Marmaduke, it's just, it looks really weird when he talks. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel like the character of Marmaduke looks more like a real dog yeah. than Garfield does to a real cat. Oh yeah, I, I don't think that they needed to do like a Scooby-Doo thing or anything. I think it, I think they made the right choice if you have to do a Marmaduke movie. Yeah. They, uh, I, I was okay with it. It it's not it's not the greatest it's kind of yeah like you said it's it's a little unsettling but i i didn't mind it yeah um another thing that's funny to mention with these endings is they both do end the exact same way but marmaduke's is much funnier <laughs> oh my god matt that was like the hardest i feel like i've ever heard you laugh before Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Garfield ends with a dance, and, and we've made this joke before and things that all, like, kids' movies in the 2000s had to end with a dance number, a dance sequence. The Marmaduke one looks so fucking silly. I was not prepared for it to happen in Marmaduke, though. <laughs> like, There's so many of them dancing, it looks so fucking silly. And then they're dancing to what I like about you, then the Chupadagra... Voiced by Sam Elliott yeah. comes in. He's, uh, <laughs> Fucking Sam Elliott walking in like, that's what I like about you. <laughs> Ford truck month. <laughs> um, it was just like the movie went and turned into pure chaos at that point. I, like we're we're it, we're all freaking out in the call as we're watching it, and because <laughs> it's it's like it's so predictable it's such a trope that it it flips back to being unexpected it's like <laughs> i i expect this out of garfield because it's like the early 2000s and it's the most predictable shit ever yeah and and to be fair it was just garfield dancing by himself yeah uh, oh Odie that was there too but yeah garfield and Odie dancing and then marmaduke it's like <laughs> we're well past the point of like Ending kids' movies with dance numbers, right? Nope. And there's at least 30 of them doing the exact same dance in unison. (laughs) Every dog in the dog park (laughs) is dancing to what I like about you. They form like a heart as the the Marmaduke and Emma Stone dog are dancing together. It's just, yeah, it's just fucking, (laughs) it's so funny looking at the move too. It's so fucking funny, because at that point, it's 100% CG. It's no longer real dogs at all. Um, It looks so out of place with the rest of the movie. It's so weird, because they kind of, like... They do have dogs moving like that occasionally, and you can see it, like, switch from real dog to CG dog occasionally. But it's, like, the entire scene is that now. Yeah. (laughs) Ah, jeez. I, uh, I, 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 I did get a kick out of that. That did. Yeah, it, it made me laugh pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there anything else to say about Marmaduke? Uh, we could mention the subplot about his owner. Oh, yeah. Trying to get, trying to get an account with Petco. That shit was get- worse. Him and everything with his family was worse than anything in Garfield. Yeah. Yeah. Um 
it, it, there's nothing to say about it, right? That's uh, I've I've, exp- it, I've explained the plot. That's all I have to say. It, it's boring. It's lame. It's predictable. I'll, I'll say I'll give it this much. It does not focus on it a lot, and that can be seen as a problem yeah. too, because it's like they're trying to make you care about this family, yet they give each each of them, except for Phil, two minutes of screen time. I forgot that they had a youngest daughter in that movie. Yeah, the youngest daughter does nothing, and then there's like this thing about the the boy doesn't want to play soccer, but that comes up twice, and then at the end it's like, oh. He's into skateboarding. Okay. Not that we'd have known that. We we haven't seen him do anything this movie. It's like the anti-Space Jam, too. I know I keep fucking mentioning Space Jam. <laughs> but that movie has, like, uh, LeBron James' the son wants to do something that isn't basketball. And they talk about that, like, for half of the movie. <laughs> that's, like, that. That's like every single time it cuts away from the Looney Tunes, that's what, that's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> the first 20 minutes is yeah. about that too <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> it's like everything that is not Marmaduke and his dog friends is just unbearably lame and, and boring yeah <laughs> um yeah I, 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 I'm glad they don't spend too much time on it but it's like oh my god there was a part where like the boy like the surfer guy is talking to the daughter and I don't remember exactly what made you say this, but at one point you're like, oh, Michael, Michael, I hate this movie. <laughs> like, it just broke you at one point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Like, uh, Marmaduke hits higher highs than Garfield, but it also hits lower lows. Because, like, yeah. I cringed at this movie. <laughs> this movie was cringy. <laughs> And that's not something I think I can say about Garfield. Garfield is too boring to be cringy. You gotta say, though, cringe is funnier than boring. Yeah, I suppose... Have we reached the point where we have to make a decision on this? I I, I knew what my decision was the second that final dance se- sequence came up. Ah, uh, jeez. Um, here's the thing. I think I could go either way on this and make a very solid case yeah and that was also true last time yeah i could have made i could have made a solid case for either of those but that time i was much more strongly catwoman this time i i don't know man i think i'm going marmaduke i'm going just because i think it is a more interesting movie I agree with you. Here's the thing. If if we were rating this exclusively off of which one represented the subject material best, I'd give it to Garfield. But in terms of just entertainment, I had more fun with Marmaduke. It doesn't spend as much time on the third act bullshit. It throws in something weird at the end. There was a moment where I was cracking up, which didn't happen once in Garfield. And there was just like so many, like, I mean, this is a, these are, these are negatives, but you know, yeah, I think a, a movie that's boring versus a movie that's so awful that you're laughing at it is better than a movie that's boring. And there's just so many fucking puns in Marmaduke that are so fucking horrible. They make so many stretches to fit in like the word bone or dog into a pun, uh, into a pun. And then, oh, a barka. Yeah. I, or was it Bona or no, Barka? Calabar. It, it might be Barker. You might be right. There was there was definitely bone used in a pun, but Marmaduke. They did like they did. They made so many stretches there too. Marma like Marma puke. Okay, you replace the P with a D. That fair enough. You can make that one. But then there's Marma fake. That doesn't work at all. That yeah, doesn't work. Marma <laughs> that doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like the same word. <laughs> the same name. Yeah. It got so. so bad with that shit that I laughed. I do think there's more effort put into the filmmaking, like the set, like I said, just with the sets. Like again, it's not nothing to write write home about. Nothing that I would be praising. I wouldn't be saying good things about it if it weren't for the fact we were comparing it to another movie. Um, but yeah, I liked the characters in this movie more too. They're and again, they're awful characters, but there's just like again, the Chupadagra and Bosco made me laugh because of how seriously they were taking it in a movie like this. The scene with like Chupadagra talking to him about his past, like it's it's so depressing, <laughs> it's so weird and out of place here, <laughs> um, and it's played very straight. They don't interrupt it with a joke, <laughs> uh, and that just and that I got a kick out of that. So horrible movie. It's a two out of ten, just like Garfield. Yeah, please, 
Please do not take our voting for Marmaduke as a recommendation <laughs> of Marmaduke. It, 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 there are parts of it that are so bad it's good, but it's not enough. It's not enough to warrant watching it. Um, truth be told, like, gun to my head, I have to watch one of these again. I might pick Garfield just because I know I can completely tune it out. Yeah. I know nothing is going to happen in that movie. Yeah. But... As far as watching them once, I, I got more out of Marmaduke than I did Garfield. So with me and you agreeing, I know the vote doesn't, like, the vote's not going to determine it, but I am very curious yep. to know who won the poll. I'm assuming it's Garfield. Yep, by a wide margin. Garfield, 91% to Marmaduke's 9%. <laughs> um, so we are, we are going against the crowd with this one. Yeah. But I... I do think there's a fly in the ointment here, and that's, I think a lot of people remember Garfield from when they were kids, and no one remembers Marmaduke at all. He's also a meme. Yeah, Garfield. Garfield's a much bigger meme than if Marmaduke. There's, like, different layers um, to Garfield as a meme, too. You know, there's, like, Garfield minus Garfield the comic, there's Gorefield, there's Garfield. Uh, like, there's just so much shit on the internet regarding Garfield. He's, I feel, I feel like we're gonna really, we're really, uh, making a big risk here, Matt. I think we're really gonna upset, uh, Gorefield. Well, I think he's gonna come to us in our sleep and we're done now. Uh, but, but what about, uh, it's, uh, it's a Gore Marmaduke. <laughs> Mar Marmagore. Mar Marmagore. It's about as much effort as the movie put into their pun, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did I, I did get a lot of comments on this poll saying like neither of them or I, I can't pick one over the other and like I understand those people those are the people who've watched both because <laughs> it's like nope ne neither neither of these movies are better than the other one all right I just voted for Marmaduke so now it's at 10 percent good let me read. Okay, let's see. Uh, like, I want to. I want to read some of these comments. I'm sorry, I can't possibly call either of them a good movie compared to the other. From Hugh Man, Gertie H. The way that, that Marmaduke just got bodied like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not wrong. Uh, can I phone a friend? Good stuff. Um, so I, I, we're we're declaring Marmaduke the winner. Marmaduke yes. wins. favorite movie. Marmaduke might be a one. I might lower it to a one out of ten. It's just more entertaining. I don't actually know why I'm giving it wait, like credit wait, for anything. <laughs> maybe someday we'll come back for round two and do Garfield: Tale of Two Kitties versus Marmaduke. Yeah. See if see if the sequel can take Marmaduke. I, I'd be down. But that's a ways off. Yeah. Uh. So next episode. Michael has asked me to keep it a surprise, so he doesn't yes. know what we're doing. I did tell him it was going to be painful. Yeah. So here it is, a, a painful one. Dragon Ball Evolution. I thought so. Versus Last Airbender. I, I, I was thinking it was going to be that when you said painful. All right, I, I haven't seen either <laughs> of them. Let's go. It's, it's, an obvious, it's an obvious matchup, so I think it's best to just get this one out of the way. Rip the band-aid off now. Yeah. The kind Two. of anime category. Yeah. I know Avatar The Last Airbender is not technically an anime, but it's clearly inspired by anime. Yeah, and I think I think when people talk about one of these movies, they also think of the other. Yeah. I, I, Avatar, like, plot-wise, I feel like it's probably a little closer to Dragon Ball Z than, like, Death, the live-action Death Note movie. So it's a good call. Um, yep. and fucking so I, that'll that'll be a month from now. It, it, we're uploading on the first Tuesday of every month. I didn't say that last time, but that's the plan to have an episode out first Tuesday of every month. The uh, I remember one time mentioning the possibility of doing the last Airbender as a Mackle and Zatch on my channel, which is just a movie riff show. Uh, and Z it was you or Zach who told me, yeah, I don't think you're going to have a lot of like going to get a lot out of doing that because you just said it's like not it's not funny. It's just going to be miserable. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I I do think one of these movies has an edge, but we'll we'll deal with that next time. <laughs> um, until then, for my co-host Mackle, I'm Matt Presents. Have uh, a wonderful day. Peace.